This video is a bit overdue because I've been asked many times how to set up RSSI indication in Betaflight on-screen display for Spectrum users. If you've seen any of my videos where I've included a recording of my FPV video feed, like DVR from my goggles, you may have noticed in the corner there's a number next to you know, what looks like cell phone signal strength bars, and that's the RSSI value. That's receiver signal strength indication. It's telling me how strong my signal is from my radio to my drone. The higher the number, the more confident that I can be in that radio link and that I'm not likely to have uh, a fail safe. Uh, people have seen this and they're curious as to how I've set it up because I'm running Spectrum and there's not a lot of, of uh, information out there as to how this is set up for Spectrum. If you have FreeSky or Crossfire, there's, there's a lot more information, but when it comes to Spectrum, I'm usually the one that has to get around to explaining it. So I'm sorry this is late. Um, but there's a lot of steps to it. So uh, at a high level, first you're going to need the correct receiver. That's the 4649T receiver. You're going to need to update the firmware on this receiver. You're going to need to set your protocol in Betaflight to SRXL. Then you need to tell Betaflight on which auxiliary channel the receiver is communicating the RSSI value, and then tell the Betaflight on-screen display to tell you that value. So if all of those steps make sense to you, you can just have at it. If not, we're gonna we're gonna go through it in a little bit more detail. So first off, the 4649T receiver, link in the description. I've mentioned this, this is the best receiver if you are using Spectrum. My only complaint is it's a little large. I wish I could get this functionality in a smaller receiver like you can with Crossfire and FreeSky. Uh, but anyways, Aside from the, the good receiving performance, this receiver also transmits. It transmits telemetry. That's what the T is for in the name. So it sends a signal back to your radio, and it can tell your, your radio almost anything Betaflight knows. However, to be able to talk to Betaflight, it actually needs to have the firmware updated. So updating the firmware is both going to give you better telemetry capabilities for your radio, as well as the ability to, to uh, have this receiver tell Betaflight your RSSI. So to update the firmware, you're going to need to buy something else. Sorry, I know it's kind of a pain. You're going to need this cable. It's the SPMA3065. Uh, one end plugs into USB on your computer, and the other end will plug into your receiver. Um, you'll need to run a program that is Windows specific, so as a Mac user, that's that's a little bit of a pain. I need to run, you know, like a Parallels or something like that. <clears throat> uh, you'll also need to make an account with Spectrum. You'll need to register your receiver and download the firmware update that's specific to the serial number of your receiver. So, if you need more detailed information about the receiver update process, I will leave a link to another video but it's fairly straightforward. With your receiver updated, it now has the capability to do these things. Now you need to connect it to your flight controller properly, and it's a little bit different from what you might be used to. So flight controllers have UARTs, and these are the devices that talk to other things on your quad. So you would use a UART to talk to your video transmitter so that your flight controller can set your video transmitter signal. You also use a UART to talk to your receiver so that the uh, control signal that you're sending that goes to the receiver then makes it to the flight controller. So most of the time you would use the receiver pin. Every UART has a, a receiver and a transmitter pad and you would usually use the receiver for a receiver. The name is more just to happenstance because really why you use that is because the receiver the receiver device is sending a signal to the flight controller, so that flight controller needs to receive that signal, so that's why you would use the receiver pad. However, in, in this case, we're going to be talking back and forth. So the receiver is going to be sending your command signal, the flight controller is going to be sending back telemetry data, there's, there's two-way, and it's all done on one wire thanks to Spectrum's new protocol, SRXL, which is pretty much two-way DSMX. We've got our receiver placed in the back of the quad here, just kind of strapped under our video transmitter, and we are gonna solder it to our Riot Control flight board. What we're gonna do is we're still gonna solder 
the ground and the 5 volts as normal, but then rather than soldering to the receiver pad of UART1, we're actually going to jump over here to the transmitter pad of UART1 labeled TX1. So in Betaflight here, we're just gonna walk down everything that you need to have set up to, to get all this functionality. So first in the ports tab, uh, this is where you tell Betaflight what you have hooked up to the flight controller. Each row is for configuring one of the available UARTs and you can only turn on one function for each UART. So for example, UART 6 here, I don't have anything else turned on except all the way here, peripherals I've selected, tramp because I'm using UART 6 to do my video transmitter telemetry. I don't have anything hooked up to UART 3 so nothing is turned on and in UART 1 that's where I have my uh, receiver connected and I, like I showed it's connected to the transmitter pad so all we have to do here is check the serial RX box don't turn on anything else. Uh, this last row is for the USB. Uh, don't ever touch that. You don't want to lock yourself out of the <laughs> configurator. So save and reboot. The next tab that you'll need to get into is configuration. You'll find a section for receivers. You need to tell the flight controller that you're using a serial based receiver to correspond with how you set it up in ports. So you select serial based receiver here. And then here is where you select the protocol that you're using. Now if you've used Spectrum in the past, what you probably used is Spectrum 2048, that's standard DSMX, but as I mentioned, we're actually using two-way DSMX or SRXL, so you have to select this other option down here that's currently labeled Spectrum 2048 slash SRXL, so you select that. You also need to get down into the other feature section and turn on telemetry. So once you've turned on telemetry here and selected SRXL as the protocol, now the receiver and the flight controller are going to be talking both ways. So the flight controller is going to be sending um, telemetry data that you can get on your radio. And more importantly for the subject of this video, the receiver is now also going to, in addition to sending the stick commands, it's also going to tell the flight controller the RSSI value. So to see that, the next tab we need to get into is the receiver tab. So, oh yeah, you might need to have a battery plugged in depending on your flight controller to actually power the receiver. All right, so with the battery plugged in, now we've got all of our receiver bars functioning properly. Everything's moving with the sticks and the switches and all that stuff. But another thing that you'll notice is the aux 7 and aux 8. Look, there's, there's a high and a low signal in 8 and 7 um, respectively. And what that is, is that's the receiver communicating with the flight controller, the RSSI value. And aux 7 is basically inverted. A low value is for high RSSI and 8 is not inverted, right? It's, it's high for high. So in case you're using some firmware that runs backwards for whatever reason. But most of the time, and for beta flight, you'll use aux 8. So what you do over here is you'll select RSSI channel, aux 8, and now you've told the flight controller that the aux 8 channel is being used to communicate RSSI. And the way you can test that is you can go into range test, which reduces the signal strength when I hold this button. So now holding the button, I've decreased the signal strength of my radio, and I'm going to like put it under the desk here, and look, you can see the, the numbers going down as I move the radio away from the quad and when I move it back toward the quad, the number goes back up. When I'm not in range test mode, simply moving it down there is not enough to, to trigger it. But when you maybe fly far away, you're, you're gonna see it. Essentially, that number just goes down with RSSI. So what we're gonna do next is then set up your on-screen display to show you that RSSI value. So if you've got everything in here set up, the next thing you go into is this OSD section and all you need to do is click here to turn on RSSI value as an element and then you can drag it and put it wherever you want on the screen. So that's everything that you need to do to set up RSSI indication in Betaflight on screen display using the Spectrum 4649T receiver. So if you're a Spectrum user, definitely recommend setting this up. I know it's a pain that you're probably going to have to 
order one of these one of these cables. Um, I wish there was a way to update the firmware for free, but that's just what it is. I definitely think it's worth it, and you'll need the cable one time to update all of your receivers, and then you can uh, have this functionality on all of your quads. So. Uh, yeah, I uh, hope that helps, and if there are any other Spectrum-related technical questions, ask me in the comments, and eventually I'll get around to, to answering them on this channel. Thanks for tuning in, and I will see you next time.